Gophers will kick off. KJ Hamler back deep. One of the most dangerous return men in the country. Sean, I think one of the most important things for Minnesota in this game, particularly early, is managing the adrenaline, managing the moment. And they'll get a great opportunity right now kicking the Hamlet. Grant Ryersey kicks off. And it goes out of bounds. A rough start for Minnesota. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Penn State is 8-0 in part because they've had great consistency. 18 of their 22 starters have started all eight games, but today they have got some shakeups in their lineup. Antonio Shelton, their defensive tackle, who started every game, is suspended after a spitting incident against Michigan State. Coach Franklin suspended him, supported by the Big Ten. Micah Parsons, their leading tackler, will not start today after what they're calling a behavioral modification issue. He's expected to come in the second or third series. And the biggest news, Noah Kane, the leading rusher who had worked his way up the depth chart to start his first First game last week. He is questionable today. Coach said he is an emergency situation only. He is here and dressed and did participate in warm-ups. Well, they feel that they have depth on the defensive line to take care of the absence of Shelton. They're certainly deep at running back. They've been rotating four. And Parsons will likely sit out very little time. So here's Sean Clifford from the 35-yard line. The play fake and the strike incomplete. Trying to zip it in to Justin Shorter, who is covered by Coney Durr. Clifford, redshirt sophomore from Cincinnati out of St. Xavier High School, where he won a state title as a senior. 276 yards per game of total offense. Number one in the Big Ten and number 23 in the country. Accurate thrower, good decision maker, and can hurt you with his feet as well. He has more rushing attempts than any player on their team. Steps up, takes off. Weaves across midfield and gets chopped down after a 17-yard gain by Antoine Winfield, the outstanding defensive back, their leading tackler. Well, you mentioned it. He's got more rush attempts than any of their running backs. He's a very good runner. He's faster than he looks. He's faster than people give him credit for. And he knows how to find openings to run the football. He can get down the field. He had a 58-yard rush against Buffalo earlier this year, throwing deep, single coverage, jump ball, and it is intercepted by Antoine Winfield, his sixth of the season. Well, sometimes you mess with fire, you get burned. You think you got a matchup you like, right? Justin Shorter against Antoine Winfield of safety. Not when the guy has five interceptions coming into the game. He's always around the football. He knows how to make plays on the football. And he just went up higher than a much taller receiver in Justin Shorter to make the play for the Gophers. He leads the Big Ten with six interceptions, four now in the last three games. Most in that span of the country. Only Douglas Coleman of Texas Tech has more interceptions for the season. He has seven. So the crowd ignited early. Tough field position for Tanner Morgan and the Golden Gophers offense from their own five. Rodney Smith, part of a deep running back group, runs over Lamont Wade, who made the tackle after a nine-yard game. Very big offensive line that really, since their first bye week in between Georgia Southern and Purdue, they kicked into a whole new gear in terms of running the football. Mm. And they are a very confident group running behind that big offensive line. All of them 6'5 or taller. They average 340, helped by the mammoth right tackle, Daniel Falele, who is 6'9, 400 pounds. Smith has the first down and a couple more. Cam Brown made the tackle. There's Tanner Morgan, like Sean Clifford from the Cincinnati area from Union, Kentucky. Said he can drive to downtown Cincinnati in 15 minutes. 12 and 2 as the starting quarterback here at the University of Minnesota. They list him at 6'2. He admitted yesterday he's six feet and one half inch. <laughs> very honest admission. We don't get that very often in yeah. our meetings with the players. To get honesty, not just admissions that they are shorter than listed. Throw on target, another first down. 
Rashad Bateman, the sophomore from Tifton, Georgia, they think is going to be one of the all-time greats here. Well, first of all, watch Rodney Smith, the running back with the block, to help out the quarterback. Right there, helps out on Windsor, and that opens up the slant. They throw a lot of slants off the play action to these big-bodied receivers. And again, the combination of Bateman and Tyler Johnson, as good as there is in the Big Ten. There is a flag down on the play. The officials led by Mark Kluzinski sorting it out. There is no foul for an downfield. The ball was tipped. The result of the play is a first down. I guarantee you that's something that James Franklin clued the officials into before the game because it's a lot of RPO off the run game with Minnesota. They've been called for a couple linemen downfield. They get that three to four yard area that can be kind of a gray area at times, but that's a big part of Minnesota's pass game. So the play stands, 15 yard gain. And Morgan and the offense move from their own five yard line out to the 33 and now to the 34 on the carry by Rodney Smith out of Jonesboro, Georgia, number three all time in rushing here. Behind two greats, Daryl Thompson and Lawrence Maroney. And over the last four, averaging 141 per game. It is a team, you mentioned the bye week. It's a team that has dramatically improved in running the yeah. football as the season's gone along. All of a sudden, the outside zone play kicked in. They had been working on it all season. They're using it to great impact lately. The blitz is picked up. There's an open man. It's Rashad Bateman, and he is gone. Touchdown, Minnesota. 66 yards. What a read by Tanner Morgan. There was a blitz off the slot, Sean. He saw it. So did Bateman, and they made a perfect adjustment to it. Watch, there's a blitz. John Reed comes up on the short receiver. The safety is late getting over. Late getting over to make the play. Tanner Morgan and Bateman read it quickly, and he got the football for the touchdown. Well, Lamont Wade came on a blitz, and Shannon Brooks, the running back, did a great job picking it up. Kirk Sharaka, the offensive coordinator, told us, yes, I hate to leave backs in the block, but against Penn State, you have to do it. And that's why they did do it. They played a big part in a 66-yard touchdown. The first touchdown given up by Penn State in the first quarter this season. They've given up three points all year in the opening quarter. And it leaves Wisconsin and Ohio State as the only teams now that have not allowed a first quarter touchdown this season. Ryersey kicks off for the second time. This one returnable from the five for K.J. Handel. Room straight up the middle. And taken down at the 31-yard line. Here's today's unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. Well, it's perfect design. Here's Lamont Wade coming on the blitz. That's going to send John Reed here and the running, the wide receiver here, and Garrett Taylor is going to be late getting over from his safety spot. It takes the back picking up the blitz. It takes the quarterback and receiver being on the same page, and it ends up being a touchdown for Minnesota early in the ballgame. Or Rashad Bateman talked to P.J. Fleck yesterday, said Rashad is special. And a 7-0 lead for Minnesota. The toss to Journey Brown, and he's tackled by Carter Coughlin, one of the most productive defensive linemen in the history of the Minnesota program. 21 and a half career sacks for the senior from Eden Prairie. And Scoring first is a good omen for the Gophers under Coach Fleck. A fast start was so important on both sides of the ball. They got the interception, then they get the touchdown drive on their first possession. Couldn't script a better start if you're P.J. Fleck. Minnesota likes to play with the lead. They like to milk the clock. James Franklin said it's important to get an early lead against Minnesota. Speed them up a bit. Clifford's throw off target for Jahan Dotson. It'll be third down and six. Well, it's interesting. When we talked to Ricky Ronnie yesterday, the offensive coordinator of Penn State, we asked, who else in your receiving core do you think can step up? He said, Justin Shorter. We think he's going to have a big game today. First two times they tried to throw to him. He had a drop, and he got beat on an interception. Right now he's not on the field on this third down play. 
Four defensive ends in the game now. They move a couple of defensive ends inside. They have speed along that defensive line. Clifford now to the gun. Five receivers. Sean has time. He's on target. Has a first down to Pat Fryermuth, one of the best tight ends in the country. Their second leading receiver for the year with 26. Well, apparently there was a timeout called by Minnesota. So the timeout called just before the snap on the last play. Penn State thought it had converted a first down. They'll have to do it again. It's hard to hear with deafening noise in this sellout crowd. Clifford on target again. Fryermuth broke free, and he's in to go for territory at the 45-yard line. A Gain of 20 for the sophomore from Merrimack, Massachusetts. Nice job of recognition. Winfield lined up over Friar Muth, but then he blitzed. And Sean Clifford saw it quickly and got the football to the right spot. Got it in between two defenders. Here's Journey Brown. He breaks tackles. He has lots of running room. He has a touchdown. Penn State with the quick response. 45 yards. For Journey Brown, and they're an extra point away from a seven all time. Excellent block by the left tackle, Rashid Walker, but then you're going to see a missed tackle right up here. The safety, Jordan Howden, is going to miss a tackle. He's unblocked, he misses the tackle, and Journey Brown makes a pay for it. Penn State answers quickly with an explosive play of their own. This is an offense built on explosive runs and passes. Here's Jake Pettiger for the extra point to tie it. Entertaining first four minutes and nine seconds. The extra point good. And as we mentioned, the Gophers, number 13 in the AP poll, but number 17 in the eyes of the committee. They say they're really not focused on that. There's a lot of football still to be played. Demetrius Douglas had trouble with the Jordan Stout kickoff, and he winds up. Returning yes. it only to the 13. First time in the history of the AP poll. That area dates back to 1936. Two games of eight, no teams are better on the same day. Bam and LSU later, wide open. It's the touchdown scorer, Rashad Bateman. Dropped at the 41-yard line. But a big gainer to start this possession, 28 yards for Minnesota. He actually had both receivers open. He had Johnson open deep. He passed on him and went underneath the Bateman. That play action off their run fake, off the stretch play, has been dynamite for Minnesota here over the last four or five ball games. We should note Micah Parsons is on the field. Disciplined, as Holly told you, for behavioral modification. Their leading tackler, emerging as one of the best linebackers in the country. Semi-finalist for the Butkus Award as the best linebacker in the country as a sophomore. Straight ahead goes Shannon Brooks, and that's a gain of two for the fifth-year senior from Georgia. Jan Johnson, the middle linebacker, leads the defense for Penn State, made the tackle. Jan Johnson, kind of the glue of that defense. Real active linebackers with Cam Brown and Micah Parsons on the outside, but he's the quarterback of that defense right in the middle. Very physical guy. Nice tackle at the point of attack there. Very smart. He's already earned two degrees at Penn State, and he's working on a third. Play fake to Shannon Brooks. Another bullet right on target from Tanner Morgan to Tyler Johnson. The hometown product from Minneapolis North High School takes them to the 39-yard line of Penn State. Well, Penn State tried to bring their safety, Lamont Wade, up into the run box, and that left a hole behind him. And Tyler Johnson ran right into that void, and Tanner Morgan found him with the football. 32 straight games with a reception. That's 171 career catches now. Tied with 2-2 Atwell for third in Minnesota history. On first and 10, straight ahead, Shannon Brooks and Robert Windsor made the tackle having an outstanding year in the middle of that defensive line. You know, we talked about after the bye week and the change in this Minnesota offense in their running game. The other thing to keep in mind, they have three running backs that are all really powerful and good runners and they're all healthy now, which they've all battled injuries at different times in their career. And now
now they're all healthy, and that's made a big difference for this Gopher offense, too. Smith, Ibrahim, and Brooks, 7,503 combined rush yards. That's the most of any running back trio in the country. Deep and talented at a lot of places. Mohamed Ibrahim tackled at the 33-yard line by Windsor, Jan Johnson, and Garrett Taylor. I think if you're a doubter of this Minnesota team, you run the risk of having your opinion changed. Well, they're off to about as good a start as you could make in terms of making a right impression. I mean, they look the part. They're a physical, well-coached, disciplined team. You can understand the doubts. This is the first ranked opponent they've played this season. Right. The eight teams they've defeated have a combined winning percentage of 42 percent. That is second lowest among any Power Five team. Only Missouri, by that standard, has played a weaker schedule. Ibrahim, his specialty is short yardage, and he did not get the first down. They have not kicked field goals very well. So on fourth and one, they're going to send their Wildcat quarterback into the game, Seth Green. They don't necessarily put him in the Wildcat when he's on the field, but more often than not, they do, and he's good at it. Well, they are this time because Tanner Morgan's down here as a wide receiver. They've used this quite a bit. This is the real quarterback, Tanner Morgan, here. So Seth Green, big guy in there at the Wildcat. 6'4", 240, was a tight end. He keeps it, lowers his head, and has the first down to the 28-yard line. Excellent block by the tight end, Brevin Span Ford, number 88, coming across. And then Ibra Ibrahim with the lead block. And they do a combination. They'll let the quarterback run and lead block with the back. They'll let the back run and lead back, lead block with the quarterback. That time, Seth Green gets the first down with power. Scored two touchdowns for Coach Fleck in their last game two weeks ago against Maryland. Each of these teams coming off a bye week. They're well rested, had a chance to get some people healthy. Rodney Smith back in, and he gets stacked up. I think they have the, the clearest path to the playoff. I'll be shocked if they're not one of the four teams in there when it's all said and done. Rodney Smith outside, he goes. Well, we talked about four yards short of the first down. We talked about the stretch play, and that's been their second pitch. They've always been good at the inside zone. That has become their new second favorite play, and they got an excellent block that time by Blaze Andrews, the left guard against Micah Parsons. Penn State wants to get penetration when they see that play. They want to get across the line of scrimmage. Parsons did, but he got picked up by the secondary block. The Gophers went to that outside zone or stretch play because they want to see the defensive lineman running laterally, not penetrating. Short throw, little bubble, Chris Ottman Bell inside the 10, the 5, touchdown Minnesota! As long as that play and the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage, linemen can get downfield the block. This is perfect execution by Minnesota. Ball's caught behind the line of scrimmage, linemen are downfield. And then Chris Ottman Bell, who <laughs> Coach Chiraca told us he knows he's number three as a receiver, but he wants to be number one, and all he does is make big plays. That's a number one kind of play right there by Ottman Bell. A huge catch in there, win against Fresno State early in the year on a fourth down. Brock Walker kicks the extra point. Yeah, there wasn't anywhere near this one yesterday when these Gophers had their walk through. TCF Bank Stadium Field 16. Thursday night, K.J. Handler back for Grant Wiersey kickoff, and he's down at the 21-yard line. Back in 1904, by the way, they uh, opened the season. They played some high school teams. They opened the season with Twin Cities Central High School on their way to 9-0. Bill Lamagna, a rules expert, refereed that game. Penn State will not be charged with timeout. We reset the play clock. It's first and 10. No timeout for Penn State. So 
Still first and ten, no timeout. Journey Brown, another long journey for Brown across midfield in the Gopher territory and banged out of bounds at the 40 yard line. Uh, another long run for Brown. This one's 35 yards. Well, watch the block of the center right here. Michael Bennett is going to do a nice job just kind of getting the middle linebacker tied in there. And then Journey Brown with some nifty running, quick feet in the hole, breaks it outside. And we've already seen that ability to turn a short run into a long game. They scored their touchdown on a 45-yard gallop. Clifford down the middle, an open receiver, and he wow. short hopped. Pat Fryermuth. Yeah, Fryermuth had to stop for the ball. If that ball's thrown deeper, he walks into the end zone. Good design on the play call. He's splitting the defense, and there's nobody behind him. If that ball's thrown two yards deeper, it's open for a touchdown. He had to kind of pull that hand back. You see, he hit his hand on a, I think it was his own offensive lineman, and that's why that ball was short. Now you wonder if that right hand or right thumb is okay on this play. Just one for five to start the game. Uh, Tanner Morgan's five for five. That one behind Handler, but he caught it. And he's down inside the 20. They'll spot it at the 17. And Penn State trying to answer once again 23 on that play. It's RPO. The offensive line is blocking run. It's a good play fake. That brings the linebackers up, and you run those slants behind it. Nice connection to Hamlet. Clifford steps toward the line. It's off the hands of Hamler with Jordan Howden in coverage. Former walk-on here at Minnesota, Jordan Howard out of Las Vegas. Now this is the part of the field where Friar Muth really becomes a coveted receiver. Big, good hands. Here he is right here, kind of in a bunch formation. You've got two tight ends and Hamler to the same side of the formation. He caught three touchdown passes in their last game two weeks ago against Michigan State. A fake to Brown. Clifford straddling the line of scrimmage, hoping for a block from Hamler. He gets chased out by Braylon Oliver, redshirt freshman from Douglasville, Georgia. Short of the first down by a couple of yards. Yeah, you see the creativity, though, by Sean Clifford. Nobody was there. He has become a really outstanding runner in this offense. Some by design, but most of the time just when he improvises. Quarterback run very much in play here on third and short on the 10 yard line. And Hamler and Fryer move on the same side. Here they are right there. Before the ball was snapped, delay a game. Offense. Wow. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, they were up around the line for a long time looking to the sideline. It wasn't like they had to race to the line of scrimmage. They just took too long once they got there. And I think you saw James Franklin when he covered up that microphone. I think he was letting Ricky Ronnie know upstairs, we can't afford that. We've got to speed up. That's a costly penalty on third down. The sellout crowd making it difficult. Clifford throws incomplete. Trying to get it to Fryer Muth again. And the field goal unit will come on for the Nittany Lions. Jake Penninger will try to make it 14 to 10. That time Boye Mafe was in the pressure on the quarterback and forced that errant throw by Sean Clifford. But that penalty, third three to third and eight, was huge against Penn State. Jake Penninger, five out of six for the sophomore. From Ankeny, Iowa. Snap and hold are good. And the kick is right down the middle with the All-State net. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Their team trying to prove a point. Their fans fervently believe that this is one of the best teams in college football, and they look like it so far today. Jordan Stout's kickoff will be a touchback. Yes. A little history lesson, courtesy of Aflac. 
creative friends in the truck, led by our producer Phil Dean, our director Scott Johnson. Here's Rodney Smith. He gets nine. Well, Minnesota was a powerhouse in 1904. They won their third national championship that year. But what do you think the college football playoff committee would have <laughs> thought about the win over Twin City Central yeah. High School? <laughs> Only Nebraska scored on them the right, entire year. year. They beat the Huskers 16 to 12. Smith looks like he has enough for the first down just across the 35. You know, one thing about this Minnesota run game, we've talked about the big offensive line, we've talked about the healthy running backs, the trio. The other thing about this offense, their tight ends are outstanding blockers, and we'll see a bunch of different ones. Co-Keefe, number 42, is the starter. Jake Paulson, who hasn't played for a couple weeks, number 80, also an outstanding blocker. This formation, they don't have one in, but when they run the football, those tight ends are a critical part of the, of the action. Third possession for Minnesota. They've scored touchdowns on the previous two. Tyler Johnson weaves across the 40. Quan Brisker made the tackle. And bear in mind that the Gophers are doing this against a Penn State team that was second in the country in scoring defense coming in. They've given up 9.6 points per game on their way to 8-0. Only Ohio State better. They hadn't given up a touchdown all year in the first quarter. They've given up two to the Gophers today. Uh, I think they knew that this was going to be a tough matchup with these wide receivers. Now their pass rush for the most part this year has bailed them out. But so far not able to get to the quarterback. Muhammad Ibrahim. Got closer to the line to make but didn't get there. Minimal gain. It'll be third down and three in the Gophers don't need to snap it again. Brent Pry, the defensive coordinator for Penn State, leading one of the best units in the country, but tested today. Most points they've given up in a game this year is 21 to Michigan. Well, this is part of that clock. I mean, they're one of the few teams still in college football that believes in the power of time of possession. It's an important part of P.J. Flex's plan here at Minnesota. Learned to manage the clock from Jim Tressel when he was a graduate assistant at Ohio State. Lots of offense in the first quarter. Minnesota leads 14 to 10. The Gophers had 199 yards of offense in the first 15 minutes. And as the second quarter begins, Tanner Morgan and Minnesota looking at third down, a long three, a short four, however you want to characterize it. And Penn State showing man coverage, press man. Morgan pulls it down, takes off running. Slides down at the 49-yard line with a Minnesota first down. Whenever there's man coverage, that's going to open up running lanes for the quarterback. When you see linebackers take off in coverage, that opens things up. And Tanner Morgan reads it, and he finds open grass and gets the first down on third and four. Good block by John Michael Schmitz, who's come in at center for Connor Olson. He's not a starter, but P.J. Fleck calls him their sixth starter. They rotate him into the game and move positions. Yeah, Olsen's at left guard now. He gives them versatility playing center and guard. Blaze Andres, the starting left guard, typically can play guard and tackle. So they've got a lot of flexibility in what they do with this offensive line. Mohamed Ibrahim, the ball carrier. He got them across midfield. Very methodical. This is, you know, James Franklin said we don't want to let them get the game developed the way they want. Well, this is the way Minnesota wants the game to be right now. Here's Shannon Brooks trying to turn the corner and did not. Stopped at the line of scrimmage by Garrett Taylor, 50-year senior safety out of Richmond, Virginia. That was beautiful play by Jason Oway, the defensive end, though. Jason Oway had contained on that play. He read the stretch play. He kept his outside arm free and turned that play back inside. And that's why the play was stopped for a very short game. There's another third down for Minnesota. They're two out of three on third down. Burned it on a fourth down with the Wildcat. Gross Matos right here is over the center. He's usually on the outside. Tough pot to be there in the middle. Morgan given time, 
throws near sideline incomplete intended for Chris Ottman Bell Tariq Castro Fields won the battle of hyphenated last names it was a good read that was where the single coverage was but it was excellent coverage by Castro Fields downfield to knock the ball away there's a miss in the game for Morgan six out of seven AJ Hamler Dangerous punt returner back for the punt from Jacob Herbers. Punted only one time in their last game out, against out, Maryland. Penn State. This is their first of the half. There's the national championship trophy presented by Dr. Pepper on hand here at TCF Bank Stadium in Minneapolis for this big Big Ten battle with national championship implication. Both of these teams visions of hoisting that trophy in New Orleans in January. Penn State called timeout. They had 12 men on the field. Save a penalty. Burgers punts it almost straight up in the air. It takes a great bounce. Landed near the 20. Wow. <laughs> and is going to stop at the six yard line. Here's Holly Rowe. Well, Penn State with a missed opportunity on their last offensive possession in the red zone. Sean Clifford was chased out of bounds. James Franklin sprinted 20 yards downfield, got in his quarterback's ear and said, you've got to go faster. Clifford did not, and a result, a delay of game penalty really stalled that drive, and they were forced to settle for a field goal. After all of that, Clifford came over to the sideline, had a long conversation with Franklin. He has got to be more efficient pre-snap, getting them going quicker on offense. You know, Holly, when you're playing on the road, Everything slows down. Your communication, that whole process, you have to speed things up as the quarterback. Journey Browns had a big first half. Runs a 45 for a touchdown. Another run of 35. He settles for about five on that play, driven back by Jamal Teague and Antoine Winfield. You see so many offenses that try to change things at the line of scrimmage, call the game there. Much easier to do at home than it is on the road. They pick up the tempo here, get to the line quickly, snap it quickly, and Brown, a redshirt sophomore from Meadville, Pennsylvania, stopped short of the line to make. These fans are into it. They were encouraged to wear maroon. They responded to that, and they're waving their gold rally towels. <laughs> Feels like I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Third and three, they fake the run. It's on target to Fryermuth for a first down. Chopped down by Antoine Winfield in the 27, 13 yards on third down. See, this play fake is just going to hold these linebackers enough to get Fryermuth behind him. You got to respect the play fake. It opens up right behind him, and this time Clifford on target. Clifford, take the handoff, take the heat might run. Finally through to Handler, who's knocked out of bounds on the Penn State. Sideline, far side. They'll spot it at the 32-yard line, a gain of five. Tony Durer made the tackle. Very solid. Cornerback number 16. Clifford, designed quarterback run. Dropped after a yard. It was Carter Coughlin again. Minnesota is playing without one of their best defensive players. Kamal Martin is one of their top tacklers, tied for the lead. He's only played five games battling some injuries, and they miss him. He's a real difference maker on their defense. Hasn't been in the ball game so far today. Thought he might be able to go. We visited with the coaches yesterday, but it doesn't look like he will. Then they go to the four defensive end package. More speed along the defensive line, anticipating pass on third and four. Clifford shows his own speed, ran away from the speedy D line, got the first down out to the 43 yard line. Mariano Sori Merritt, who's the stand in for Kamal Martin, made the tackle. Watch when this linebacker blitzes here, Clifford's going to read it, get right inside, find green grass, and he's done this all season. Again, he's played with a maturity beyond his years, and those are just good, fast decisions by the young quarterback. That one a 10-yard gain, 10 minutes to go in the half. 
Long throw. Hamler in a crowd runs under it. Winfield got there a fraction too late for Minnesota. And Penn State in business at the Gopher 40 after a 17-yard play. Defense number 12. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And they'll tack 15 onto the end on the personal foul called against Tayon Devers. Yeah, well, this is a clear call. The ball is going to be released. It's gone. And a clear late hit. And then at the end of the play, Winfield just kind of misjudged the ball. Hamler is not a big guy, but he was able to keep him away with his body and make the catch because that ball was in the air a long time. And Winfield was not able to make a good play on the ball thanks to the positioning of Hamler. First penalty against the Gophers, 33rd of the year. Only Wake Forest has been assessed fewer penalties across the country this season. It's a very disciplined Minnesota team. Journey Brown dumped by Micah Du Treadway, a transfer from Notre Dame. Big body guy who did not get on the field a lot at Notre Dame. He's been a good addition to this defensive front here in Minnesota. Shifting in the middle of that front and standing up to Treadway's number 18. This looks very confusing right now for Penn State. Play clock still with seven seconds. Shepard a couple of peaks to the sideline, snaps it with two. Sends it out wide for Journey Brown, incomplete. It'll be third down and nine. They just looked a little discombobulated on where they wanted their personnel on that play. They shifted two or three times, snapped the football, then they had the errant throw, and now it's third down at, at nine in Minnesota territory. Ricky Slade in a running back. They blitz and ran him over, but the ball got off, and it's intercepted again by Antoine Winfield. And he brings it back to the 39-yard line. 14 to 10, Minnesota. They have the ball back after the second interception of the game from Antoine Winfield. From their own 39, Tanner Morgan on target again. Rashad Bateman. Inside the Nittany Lion 40 to the 39 yard line. Again, there's the play action with the slam. But going back to the interception, Mariano Sori Barrett is right here. He's the guy playing in place of Kamal Martin. Watch him run over the running back, Ricky Slade. He creates the pressure. Then on the back end, this could have been a defensive pass interference on Chris Williamson. It was not called. And Winfield able to come up with his second interception. So a big break there for Minnesota. And now they've capitalized on the first down play. Tanner Morgan so impressive at quarterback. Seven out of eight for 175 and two touchdowns. That is not his best performance of the season to date as earlier this year against Purdue. He had a game when he completed 21 out of 22 for 396 yards and four yeah. touchdowns. One of the best performances that you'll ever see in college football by a quarterback. Yeah, Purdue was really intent on stopping the Minnesota run. They only ran for 93 yards, but Tanner Morgan made them pay in the passing game in a huge way. A completion percentage of 95.5 against the Boilermakers, the best in Big Ten history. And among those who threw a minimum of 15 passes in a game, trying to thread it in, and he does! Tyler Johnson, touchdown, Minnesota. A one-handed grab by the great Tyler Johnson. And Minnesota on fire on offense here in the first half. Set up again by the Winfield interception. One-on-one -on -one coverage against the freshman, Keaton Ellis. A perfect throw and a big time catch by a big time receiver, Tyler Johnson. Here's Brock Walker. Red shirt freshman kicker who had attempted only one point after all season prior to today. He's won the kicking battle at least for the time being. PJ Fleck fired up and 
Justifiably so. Perfect throw over the outside. You just see the strength, the big body of Tyler Johnson fights off the freshman, Keaton Ellis, and another touchdown for the Golden Gophers. They capitalize on the turnover, a pass to Bateman, and now a touchdown pass to Tyler Johnson. Minnesota looking as strong as they look to us on film. Yeah, I don't think you and I are surprised that they look good. Yeah. They look really good on tape. You can say, well, they didn't play anybody, but all you can do is beat the people that That's you've right. been playing. In the last four games they played, they've been hammering people. And when you watch the film, the talent jumps up. I mean, Johnson and Bateman, that's one of the best wide receiver duos in the country. Winfield's already shown he's one of the best defensive backs in the country. They have a mammoth and good offensive line. They have three accomplished running backs and a quarterback who does a great job of running the show. Absolutely. <laughs> and they have a good plan coming into this game off the bye week that is causing a lot of problems for Brent Price defense so far. And Ryerson, very short kickoff. K.J. Handler trying to get outside, and he's chased out of bounds. There's a flag down back at the 23-yard line. He went out at the 33. During the return, illegal block in the back. Return team number seven. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down, Penn State. Guys, Antoine Winfield Jr. having a fantastic game with two picks that they've turned into points, and he has a good reason for being good in that backfield. He had one of the world's best mentors, his own father, Antoine Winfield, won the Thorpe Award while he was at Ohio State, went on to have a great NFL career where he was a three-time pro bowler. He said, my dad has taught me all the little intricacies of this craft. And guys, he knew exactly how many interceptions he needed to take over number one in the country. He is now tied for first with seven. He told me yesterday he was going to do it today, and boy, he actually has. Pathetic. Tied with Douglas Coleman of Texas Tech for the National League. Seven interception. Ricky Slade chopped down behind the line of scrimmage by Carter Coughlin and Coney Durr. And by the way, the seven interceptions for the season ties the Minnesota single season record with Jeff Wright in 1970, the most recent to have seven, and the only other, Harold Van Every. Back in 1939. And a lot of season left for Winfield to have that record all by himself. Lots of time for Sean Clifford. Throws deep for Handler. And good coverage by Jordan Howden, who was right on his hip. Excellent coverage by Howden. And that time you saw just, just a little glimpse of panic in Sean Clifford. He didn't have anything. He just took a shot down the field for Handler. But that was excellent coverage, and now it's third and long, deep in his own territory for Sean Clifford. Again, Friar Muth, very much an option at this point in the field. Unfamiliar territory for Penn State. They have trailed infrequently on their way to 8 0. Clifford, a nice pocket, and a throw that's dropped off the hands of Daniel George. You said it earlier, Todd, they're looking for other wide receivers to make plays beyond Ambler, and they're really not getting much from the other guys. No, not so far. And, I mean, Dotson has not had a ball thrown to him. This is the first one to shorter. That's a catchable ball. It's a good throw by Sean Clifford, and you've got to have other guys step up. Daniel George is not able to make the play. Blake Gillikin, the punter, caught by Demetrius Douglas, and he's ripped down immediately. The Gopher Partisans here at TCF Bank Stadium. Minnesota leading by 11. They go to the flea flicker. Tanner Morgan has a man wide open. Tyler Johnson, the ball's out, and it goes out of bounds. And it'll be Minnesota ball. Big break for the Gophers. It'll go into the books as a 27-yard gain. Well, you're going to see eyes on the backfield. That is what holds the defense. And the freshman linebacker, Brandon Smith, number 12, not able to get out there in time to make a play. Good hit on the football by Marquise Wilson, the freshman quarterback. But it's kicked out of bounds and Minnesota first down. There's Shannon Brooks. Down near the 10-yard line, Jack 
tackle by Lamont Weed after Micah Parsons missed close to the line of scrimmage. This is the stretch play. You get everything moving this way. Now watch the right guard get enough of a block on Parsons as he tries to come across the line of scrimmage. One block, the back has the opportunity to cut it up anywhere inside, and they get another first down deep in Penn State, ter Penn State territory. They couldn't get that play to work early in the season. As a result, they couldn't run the football. Kirk Shiraka, the offensive staff, stuck with it. He credits the offensive line coach Brian Callahan. Boy, are they making hay with the outside zone and the stretch plays, they call it. Micah Parsons tackled Shannon Brooks. There's Kirk Shiraka. So they went back and studied Washington Redskins film from yep. when Mike Shanahan was the head coach there. Well, they felt like they really needed another run, a second pitch. They loved their inside zone, and they were using the play action passes off the outside zone, but they needed to get better at running it. And uh, credit to them for sticking with it, even though last year when they put it in, it was pretty much bad the whole year. Penn State said, we're not going to run laterally against that play along the line. We're going to try to penetrate and blow it up. But it hasn't worked all that often. Morgan was under some duress, got it to Brevin Span Ford. Just his third catch of the season and only the seventh for a Minnesota tight end. Really nice play by Jan Johnson that time. And that's kind of a play where you try to fool him. You don't throw to the tight ends much. It's a throwback play. And Jan Johnson was not fooled. Very smart defender in the middle of that defense. Was there to snuff it out. One of their team leaders. Fifth-year senior Jan Johnson, a team captain, degree in psychology, a master's in management and organizational leadership, and now getting a third degree in health policy. A fade and over the head of Tyler Johnson. They had exactly what they wanted, Sean. They had Tyler Johnson going on Lamont Wade, who's a five-foot-nine safety. He's had an excellent season, especially the last four games. But that matchup favored Tyler Johnson and just an overthrow by Tanner Morgan. So here's Brock Walker, who has emerged as their new kicker. Redshirt freshman from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. This is his first career collegiate field goal attempt. I think his heart is racing a little bit. National TV sellout crowd, one of the big games in program history. No problem. Good from 26 and a 14 point lead for the Golden Gophers. Fired up for Gopher football and getting more excited by the moment as Minnesota has a 24 to 10 lead over the number four team in the country, Penn State. KJ Hamler back for the kickoff. Row the boat is the mantra. tries the near side and gets chased out of 26. Tanner Morgan has been brilliant so far in the first half. 10 of 12, 243 touchdown. But he's going to wish he had this one back because as he gets the fade route, if he puts that ball right there, it's another touchdown, his fourth of the game. He's got single coverage, his favorite receiver. The ball just sails a little bit wide instead of that back pylon, or else they'd have an even bigger lead than they have right now. And he has been outstanding so far in the first half. He works with a kinesiologist who's based in Toronto, and that's the reason why he does those hip snaps on the sideline over there, so his teammates make fun of him. Journey Brown, the ball carrier, Keontae Shad, made the tackle. Tanner told us yesterday, my hips are the most important part of my throwing motion. My hips need to lead my arm, so I'm trying to keep my lips, uh, hips, maybe his lips too, <laughs> loose on the sideline. That, that's your job, keeping your lips loose. <laughs> He'll do the hips. Usually not a problem. <laughs> John Clifford, just six out of 16, fakes it to Journey Brown on target there. KJ Hamler tackled by Benjamin St. Juice, and that might have been a touchdown. This. Minnesota was thinking run all the way. The fake really held him. Good fake to Journey Brown, and then you get Hamler, your big play receiver. And if it wasn't for the shoestring tackle of St. Juice, that's a touchdown for Penn State. 
One of the many things that they do so well here at Minnesota. Journey Brown, the ball carrier. A gain of a couple. They tackle very well. The safeties in particular. You see Winfield make a couple of stops where he didn't make them. It might have been off to the races. Houston, another one of those grad transfers on this Minnesota defense. Came over from Michigan. Has three years of eligibility. Graduated in two years. And he's tall. He's six foot three. Matches up on big receivers. Joe Rossi, the defensive coordinator, said St. Juice to play in the NFL, and he had a hard time getting on the field in Michigan. Carter Coughlin with the sack. Well, this is just an effort play by Coughlin. Here he is right here. He's working on Will Fries, the right tackle, and he's got to go all the way around the play. Fries does a decent job taking him around the quarterback, but then he's still able to get enough of Sean Clifford to get him to the ground. Here's Joe Rossi, the defensive coordinator, leaning forward and making some notes. Pittsburgh guy with the Pittsburgh Central Catholic. And Marino, among others, out of Pittsburgh Central Catholic. Great football history there. Sean Clifford got spun around and walloped at the 41-yard line. Coney Durr, the primary hit. He's four yards short of a first down. James, James Franklin looks like he's going to go for it. Yeah, he's signaling go for it. Fourth and four, under a minute to go in the half. Minnesota calls timeout. This is their second and a half. This is a 30 second timeout. After we spent some time with him yesterday, I'm a believer. I think he's for real, I think he's genuine, and I think his players believe he's genuine, and that's the most important thing. Well, I completely agree. Hadn't met him until yesterday. The fraud antenna was up, and it was extinguished quickly by Coach Fleck. Ultra impressive. I think he wanted to call that timeout. This is a huge play. If they get a stop here, they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Huge momentum play right here. Clifford throws and a catch in traffic by Pat Fryermuth. Clearly one of the best tight ends in the country. Nine yards and a first down at the Minnesota 32. Watch him just stick that right foot in the ground. Just got enough separation from Chris Williamson with that little step to get open for the play. 40 seconds, clock running. Two timeouts for the Nittany Lions. Clifford one on one with Fryermuth. Well covered by Antoine Winfield. A matchup of two of the best players in the country at their position. The thing about Winfield that makes him special, he's solid against the run, he can cover, and he can play the middle of the field as a safety, and he's got excellent ball skills as we've already seen. Now he's got the bloodlines, and he's had the mentor and the coach, but uh, he's got the genes too. He's got ball skills that are unique. Spent much of his youth here in the Twin Cities going to Vikings games while his dad starred for Minnesota's NFL entry. Sean Clifford going to weave his way through some traffic, including the umpire. He's down at the 27. James Franklin races onto the field to call a timeout. Now that was a design quarterback run. Journey Brown was the lead blocker, and the umpire was the, the second blocker on the play. Brad Hudak tried to get out of the way. The guy that Penn State's got to get involved here is Jahan Dotson. He's down here at the bottom, number five. He's an explosive type receiver. Has had a quiet first half so far. Third down five, three-man rush. Clifford throws. Fryermuth upended at the eight-yard line. Winfield there again, 20-yard play. First and goal, one timeout left. Clock stopped to move the chains. Yeah. Looks like they're ready to snap it and spike it. What a play by Clifford, John. I mean, he was scrambling, kept his eyes downfield, and because he was moving behind the line of scrimmage, the defense is going to open up and give him a throw to Fryermuth. That's a hard throw, moving to his left, back to the middle, on target to his big tight end to extend this drive. Fryermuth is a force. They lined up as if Journey Brown would be a wildcat. They shift 
Clifford back to the quarterback spot. He tried to rip it in, and Nick Bowers, another tight end, and it was off target. It's third down and goal with 14 seconds in a timeout lane. It was kind of a trick play. It was an unbalanced line, and so Bowers was lined up as the tackle position. But Minnesota was not full. Thomas Barber almost came away with the interception. Third and goal. Clifford looked like a design run. He's chopped down at the three. Clock still ticking. They'll let it go down, call the timeout. Then either kick a field goal or take one more shot at the end zone. The third and final charge timeout. I know you're down 14 on the road, but I think you got to take points here, don't you? Minnesota's going to get the ball to start the third quarter. I think you got to take points, cut into the lead, and, and go in and, and figure out what's wrong with your plan for the second half, particularly defensively. If you go for it here and don't make it, Minnesota goes into the locker room with tremendous momentum, and they get the ball to start the third quarter. I agree with you. A lot of football to be played. You have an offense that's capable of being yes. explosive. Take the points. Here comes Jake Penninger, Blake Gilligan, the punter, is the holder. You had a fake you liked. That might be within the realm of possibility. This is essentially an extra point for Penninger. 21-yard field goal from almost dead center. There's a flag down. And he ran into the kicker. Benjamin St. Juiced. Now what do you do? No time left. The field goal was good. They're looking to the sideline. They yep. could take half the distance. Running into the kicker on the defense. That penalty is declined. The field goal is good. That's the end of the first half. It applies the same logic we were just right. talking about. If you're going to take the points, take the points. They got the points. 10 of 12, 240 yards. He's going to get the ball to start the third quarter. Penn State has to figure some way to get under his skin and get some pressure on him. The kickoff results in a touchback. And here's a look at today's Pacific Life. Game summary, one of the many stars in that half for Minnesota, Antoine Winfield. Yeah, two interceptions. I mean, he is a ball hog. He has great ball skills. His dad was a great defensive back in college and the NFL. And, uh, he has just really set the tone for this Minnesota defense. They've given up a lot of yards, but the turnovers have kept this lead. And then our offense, Tanner Morgan, as we said, 10 to 12, 240 yards, three touchdowns. And, uh, he has been very comfortable and efficient. We talked about the wide receivers in that matchup, and they have shown the part so far. Start with Tyler Johnson, the wide receiver, taking the ball. Around the left side, very little, perhaps a yard. Those 240 yards passing for Tanner Morgan in the first half, the most passing yards allowed by Penn State in a first half of any game since the 2017 Rose Bowl, the end of the 2016 season. And Sam Darnold threw for 263 for USC against the Whitney Lions in that first half. Minnesota with 322 yards of total offense. Bear look now, a little change here. They cover the inside guard and the center. And Rodney Smith runs right through it. Micah Parsons, the tackle a moment ago. Holly with James Franklin. Coach Franklin, what was the greatest area of correction you addressed with your team just now? against our defense than we had seen on film. We got to settle down there. We got to get, get them to third down and then get off the field. They haven't been uncomfortable in offense in the first half, so we got to be better on first and second down. And then offensively, can't turn the ball over. I mean, we've done a great job of that all year long. We've turned the ball over, played right into their hands. Couldn't have played much worse in the first half. We're still in this thing, so we'll play well in the second half. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Morgan forced to pull it down. Swatted down by Jan Johnson for a loss on the play. Another 
turnover certainly a key. Penn State committed two. The two interceptions thrown by Sean Clifford, picked off by Antoine Whitfield. You think of Minnesota football, the row the boat culture, because it really is a culture. So many aspects of it, but disciplined football at the core of it. One penalty for the Gophers in the first half, no turnover. And efficient. I mean, they're efficient on both sides of the ball. They're in the right place on defense for the most part. They've been very efficient with both the run and the pass. That was the first negative yardage play of the ball game for Minnesota right there. That's one of the terrific defensive fronts in the country. Morgan on the run in the open field, spun away from Lamont Wade. But Shaka Tony got him down well shy of the first down line to make by about seven yards. I think that Tanner Morgan, they worked with him. See Sean Clifford on the sideline. They, they talked to him a lot during the bye week. Hey, Penn State, they collapse the pocket. You've got to speed the clock up. If you don't see your first or second progression early, make something happen. Get out of there. We've seen already two plays him doing that. Kirk Shiraka said we spent a lot of time scheming to give our number one option in each passing play the ability to get open quickly. Help Morgan get rid of it quickly. They go to the run on third and seven. Here's Muhammad Ibrahim, not content to go down. He delivers a blow. Garrett Taylor stuck his face in at the end of it and got knocked back. Watch the block by Curtis Dunlap on Micah Parsons. That's the key block on the play. You got to block that middle linebacker. And they did it. They fooled him with the run on third and seven and got the first down. It was Tariq Castro Fields who got run over. Penn State was best in the country entering today. They were giving up 1.99 yards per rush to their opponents. Minnesota's average five per carry today. That one good for 21. Sophomore from Baltimore, Ibrahim. Rodney Smith, driven back by Parsons, who missed on that previous play. Yeah. He didn't miss on that one. He beat Coke for the tight end, who's had a good game blocking. On the edge for Minnesota. That time he was beaten to the inside by Parsons for the for the play. And another behind first two behind the line of scrimmage plays for this Penn State defense that has lived off of those kind of plays. Tackles for loss and sacks all season. A flag for by the referee and two, two men on the field. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the offense. Five yard penalty <laughs> remains second down. And yep. It's tough to sneak one of these offensive right. linemen off right. as big as they are. Yeah, you might have a chance with a wide receiver, but when it's an offensive lineman, you're not going to get away with that. Sam Schluter tried to here's sneak that, off. Here's that unbalance that James Franklin was talking about. Schluter back in the ball game. Second and 16. Bobby Smith stacked up for no game. A response here after giving up a couple plays. The Penn State defense with some negative plays. And then the help with the penalty is the first third and long play that Minnesota has been in. They've been able to stay in manageable situations, throw the ball when they want and how they want. This one plays into the hands of the Penn State defense for a bit better. 24 points given up. You saw Brent Price's defense has been outstanding all year, but the 24 points the most they've given up in a game this season. They had yielded that at the half. Michigan scored 21 against the Nittany Lions. Out to Tyler Johnson. He's inside the 40, but still 10 yards short of the first down. Taken down by Cam Brown. This has got to be too far for a field goal. As P.J. Fleck thinking about going for it, still got a lot of yards to gain on fourth down. Too close to punt, too far to kick a field goal. And under his philosophy, time of possession is the most important thing. This is not too early for him to start milking the clock. He says, if I think we have the game going our way, and I feel comfortable we can protect the lead. I'm going to slow the place down, or the plays down, the pace down, and that's what he's doing. 
might just let this run all the way down and call timeout. Looks like that is what he's going to do. I think you're right. I don't think they can get conservative, though, at this point in the game. Penn State has too much firepower on offense. They have to keep doing what they've been doing. This possession, Penn State just got it behind the chains. Delay a game. Offense, five-yard penalty, remains fourth down. There's Jacob Herbers, the punter. Done an excellent job. His specialty this year has been pinning opponents inside the 20 yard line. Ten of his 27 punts prior to today had been inside the opposing 20. Including five in one game against Purdue. And here it is again. Fair catch made by KJ Handler. The likelihood of these teams making the playoff. Ohio State. Deemed to have the best chance. You might be wondering, Minnesota, 1.2% entering today, a number that obviously will go up. If they could knock off fourth ranked Penn State here today. A jump up to 3.8%, we're told, by the FPL people, by the ESPN. Sean Clifford, first play from scrimmage of the second half for the Nittany Lions, and his pass went over the head of Daniel George. No contact there by Durer, but I think the ball was so high on the throw that it wasn't even catchable. With power rush on the inside by Sam Renner, number 90. He just pushes his man back into the quarterback's lap. Watch number 90 working on Gonzalez and then gets a hand up and knocks the ball away. He and Coughlin both collapsing the pocket. Came here as a walk on Joe Ross. He said he went from wondering if he'd ever play a snap to now he's an NFL prospect. As a fifth year senior from nearby Maple Grove, Minnesota. Minnesota showing pressure here, but I think they'll probably back out and only rush three. That's what they do. Make it complete it underneath. And they get close to Clifford. And he is yanked down at the one yard line. Asese Otomawa made the tackle for Minnesota. It was a three-man rush. They dropped eight. Clifford couldn't get rid of the ball early. That's why he tried to leave the pocket. He was first forced out of the pocket by Boye Mafe. And then Otomowe. Something like that. <laughs> Otomawa. Otomawa with the sack. Blake Gillikin, the veteran, out of the back of the end zone. High, good punt. What a year he's had. Demetrius Douglas from his own 47. Bounces off the initial hit. Great punt. Had to convert on third down and 29 in the final moments of the game against Georgia Southern from their own six with no timeouts left to march down the field and beat them by three. They've been crushing people since. Shannon Brooks tried the middle unsuccessfully loses the ball as he hit the ground the quarterback Morgan try to get it back but Penn State has it at the 50 yard line the first takeaway of the game for Brent Price defense I think it was the freshman Keith Ellis who knocks this ball out excellent job by the Penn State defense stringing the play out or on one side you've got Dodson on the other side perfect field position to, to take a shot and see if you can get a big one right here off the turnover. From the 50 yard line neither team has scored here in the third quarter. Journey Brown almost escaped but couldn't get away from Cody Durr from Baton Rouge Louisiana. What a day he's having. Red shirt junior only 5'9 but Joe Ross said tremendous feet great in run support and coverage. And we've seen that today. And Rossi is the defensive coordinator here in Minnesota. His rush got close to Clifford, but didn't get him down. And that ball is caught by KJ Handler with Jordan Howard draped all over. It looked like it was going to be an interception because I didn't think Clifford was able to get enough on this throw. It was a little bit underthrown. What a job by Hamler maintaining his concentration as he's going to the ground for the catch. 16 yard gain. Journey Brown off left guard. Stopped at the 32. Yeah, PJ flex a character and he has interesting people on the staff too. We were visit with the coordinators yesterday. Talked to Joe Rossi. Joe Rossi's coached a lot of different places. 
A couple of years ago, he was out of football. He, he was part of the staff that got fired at Rutgers. His wife was just about to give birth. He said, you know what, I'm going to take a year off, help raise my baby. K.J. Handler on the jet sweep action, dumped by Carter Coughlin. So then when he went to uh, get back in, T.J. Fleck offered him a roll here, but it was an off-the-field analyst. And Joe Rossi's, one of his jobs was to drive around campus in a golf cart during the day to make sure the gopher football players were going to their classes. Right. In January. In January. He said, I had a golf cart that had no windshield. He said, one day I'd come in, it was driving rain, about 35 degrees. I did sit for about three minutes and say, what the heck am I doing? They said, stop feeling sorry for yourself, get back to work. Now he's the defensive coordinator doing a tremendous job. Clifford throws. A.J. Handler again. Steady diet of their best receiver, and it's a first down for Penn State at the 20-yard line. We've seen Clifford do this a couple times. He starts to leave the pocket, and he looks like he's going to run it. You have to respect him as a runner, but he keeps his eyes downfield, and he's able to quickly deliver the ball forward for the first down. Trying to capitalize on the first go for turnover of the day. Clifford down the middle. Off the hands of Justin Shorter. It would have been a touchdown. Well, they wanted to get this guy involved. They thought that Justin Shorter could have a big game today. This is his second drop, and he was also the guy that Winfield went up over and got the interception on. Clifford paid the price, but he put the ball in the right spot, and Shorter just wasn't able to come down with it. Ironically, Shorter is their tallest wide receiver, with Sam Renner, who put the hit on Clifford. They try Handler coming in this direction, and he's yanked down by Jordan Howden after a gain of eight. Third down to two as we approach five minutes remaining in the third quarter. They haven't really said it yet, but this is the area where they missed Noah Kane. Of all their running backs, he's the most powerful runner that they have. He is dressed, but the coaches were hoping not to use him with a lower body injury. They don't give specific injury information at Penn State. This will be quarterback one. It's Journey Brown spins and is very close to that line to make along the 10-yard line. Antoine Winfield to tackle. Nice double team in there by the center. Michael Bennett, C.J. Thorpe, the right guard, he gets the first down. First and goal from just inside the 10-yard line. Those of the football barely across the 10. Prior new territory here. Mm -hmm. Trip right here, 87. Got a bunch set with two tight ends at Hamler. Single on Dotson at the bottom. It's a touchdown, great fake by Clifford, and Nick Bowers has his first catch of the game. A 10-yard touchdown. Well, he just sneaks in. You've got Hamler and Friar Muse there next to him, and here's Bowers. He's going to slip right in here, and Minnesota kind of forgets about him. All the attention on 87 and 1, and a nice play called by Ricky Ronnie and a read by Sean Clifford. Going to go for two here. Try to make it a three-point game with 4.05 to go in the third quarter. Not enough guys here at the bottom. Not enough defenders. They throw it out to Ricky Slade. And even shorthanded on this side, they made the stop. Penn State capitalized on the first Minnesota turnover of the day, turned it into six points. And the kickoff by Jordan Stout down by Demetrius Douglas. The first half, Minnesota had 321 yards against Penn State's defense. No negative plays by the Nittany Lions. First two possessions, three negative plays and a turnover. So a much more spirited effort here to start the second half. Morgan caught Chris Ottman-Bell. Quality gain on first down. He got eight. And Morgan delivered that under duress. Hit right as he was throwing the football, still able to make an accurate throw. And again, when they're second and two, third and three in that area, that is when uh, this offense has been very, very difficult to stop tonight. More TD passes than incompletions for Morgan, the sophomore from Union, Kentucky. 
He was on his way to Western Michigan to play for P.J. Fleck there. And when P.J. wound up coming here, he invited Morgan to come with him. Rodney Smith, no gain. Micah Parsons, Jan Johnson there, and it's going to be a holding penalty against Minnesota. Holding. Offense number 51, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Yeah, Curtis Dunlap got a little bit surprised by the blitzing Jan Johnson and just instinctively reached out and grabbed him. An easy call in the middle of that formation. And once again now, they were second and really short, and now they're second behind the chains, and so Penn State's defense a chance to get off the field again quickly. And after one penalty in the first half, three already here in the third quarter. And the second least penalized team in the country. Smith remains the running back on second and 12. Morgan faked it to him and has a man open. Caught first down, 46 yard line. Rashad Bateman for 23. Unbelievable route. We talked about how much they run the slant. Watch him run the slant and then out. And Tariq Castro Fields is completely twisted around. Beautiful route and another nice throw by Tanner Morgan to get the yardage back in a first down. That was pretty. 5 catches today, all of them for a first down or a score. 87 career catches in just 22 games here at Minnesota. There's the slant. Come right back to it. Picking on Castro Fields a little bit here in a couple plays. When he came in as a freshman, he was only 170 and a few pounds. He's put on about 25 pounds. They think he can still get bigger, and by the time he leaves here, they think he could be as good as Evers played here at Wideout. 13 more for number 13. Under control and comfortable. Gives it up to Rodney Smith. You can tell what we talked to him yesterday. Smith gets about five. He's very smart. And the coaches all talked about Morgan's work ethic. He said he's the football equivalent of a basketball gym rat. Always in the film room, always asking questions, bringing ideas to the coaches. And they give him a lot of responsibilities. You can see watching today, and he does a nice job of getting him into the right things. Dad Ted helped coach him growing up. He faked it to Smith. He got hit. The ball goes straight up in the air and it falls incomplete. Shaka Tony delivered the blow to Tanner Morgan and forced the pop up throw. Yeah, this was a whiff by the tight end Jake Paulson. This is supposed to be picked up. Jake Paulson is coming across as the tight end and just whiffs on the play and that's why the hit was put on Morgan and Minnesota very lucky that ball was not intercepted. Quan Brisker injured. Eligible downfield. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. Repeat second down. Hasn't played football for very long. He did play at IMG Academy. And he does have four X gloves. Yeah. But we're told the only reason he has those is they don't have any bigger. He asked if they had bigger gloves. And they said no. 400 pounds, as we all know, is a lot. A typical adult male lion, as you know, Todd being a Nittany lion, weighs 400 pounds. A piano, approximately 400 pounds. <laughs> we put Sean Clifford and KJ Hamler together for Penn State, 392 pounds. Very likable young man, and they think you know, he's just developing yeah. as a football player. Very raw still, but talented and athletic to go with that size. Second down and 11, not in field goal range. Here comes Chris Ottman Bell again, and Penn State ready for that this time. Cam Brown right there to drop it for no gain. Really well played by Cam Brown. Maintained leverage, good hustle and rally to the football that time by Penn State on defense and a third and long. And 
We've just seen a much different Penn State defense here in the third quarter than we saw in that first half. Juan Brisker, who's slow to get up a moment ago, is right back on the field now, the junior from Pittsburgh. Junior college transfer from Lackawanna Community College, first year at Penn State. 30 seconds to go, third quarter. Clearly they have slowed the pace here with the lead. You wonder if they've cost themselves some rhythm. Morgan says no to that question. On target to Rashad Bateman inside the five-yard line and out of bounds at the four. Watch the use of the eyes by Tanner Morgan. He's going to look to his left. That keeps the safety in the middle of the field, and then he throws it to the other sideline to his number one target today, Rashad Bateman. But it was the eyes of Tanner Morgan that opened that up for Bateman. What a day for Bateman. Targeted seven times. He's caught all seven for 203 yards. And a touchdown. The Minnesota Golden Gophers. Leading 24 to 19 as we go to the fourth quarter. They have it first and goal at the Penn State four. Seth Green, the Wildcat quarterback, in right now. They've done a lot of different things with him in there. Moving direct, snapping it to the other back in the backfield. They give it to Green, and he's submarine. Was he whistled down? Apparently not. They'll let the play go, and they're going to mark him near the two yard line. He has not thrown the ball this season. Now, last year he was four of five, a couple of touchdowns. But he has not thrown it yet this year. He was a quarterback, moved to tight end, then moved to wide receiver. He's a huge reason why they are the best team in the country in goal to go situations. 18 for 18 scoring touchdowns. Other teams are perfect, but they don't have as many touchdowns and opportunities as the Gophers have in goal to go. Green lowers his head again. Touchdown, Minnesota. Well, I told you these tight ends, how they block for Minnesota. Wow. you to watch when we get a chance to show the replay. Code Keith, number 42, his block for Seth Green. There's Brock Walker. To give the Golden Gophers a 12-point lead with 14-11 to go. Good. John Kurtzeraka told us yesterday that when the tight end is established in our offense, then our offense becomes tough. Watch this block leading the way for Seth Green. Just takes his man into the end zone, and Green follows for the touchdown. They have so many good players. Green, another one, an excellent role player. They're so well coached. At 38, P.J. Fleck has clearly established himself. He just agreed to a seven-year contract extension earlier this week for an average of 4.75 million. That had been in the works since the summer, but Florida State's interest might have sped up the process. We met yesterday with Kirk Chirac on the offensive board of Metro Couple. They were together in Rutgers, and Rutgers under Greg Schiano. Chiraca actually had, was the offense coordinator, and P.J. Fleck worked under him as the wide receiver coach. A couple years ago when P.J. got the job at Western Michigan, he had never been a head coach, he called Kirk Chiraca and said, I want you to come with me. Chiraca told us yesterday I had two other offers. Western Michigan would have been the least paying. He said, I told my wife, who you just saw in the middle of the screen there, Kirk Chiraca, his wife Kim, who's K.J. Handler, returning the kickoff. You know, I've decided for so long where we live. Here are the pluses and minuses of the three. You choose. She said, let me sleep on it. The next morning, she said, let's go to Kalamazoo, even though it's the lowest bank. He said, why? And she said, you've always said you think P.J. Fleck is going to be a great head coach. Let's go there, help him, and see if that's yeah. the way it turns out. Boy, was she right. 13-1 their last year in Western Michigan. 
to get the opportunity here in Minnesota. And inching closer to one of the big wins in the modern history of Minnesota football. Well, he had prior view. Good dump off to Journey Brown, but he had his tight end running down the middle of the field. Not sure why Sean Clifford didn't pull the trigger on that one, but he was able to reload and get it to Journey Brown as an outlet for a nice game. 17 yards on the completion. Brown squirts through and then got flat, but he has another first down. Penn State quickly on the move. That's a 12 yard gain. That's why it's so important when you're in scoring territory, if you're Minnesota, you've got to go for touchdowns. You can't settle for field goals. This Penn State offense is, is too powerful. They can score quickly with the playmakers they have. Devin Ford, a home run hitter at running back, true freshman, comes in. The blitz came late. Clifford got it off, and Handler goes to the turf and makes another catch. Really good protection. This is a long route. Handler's running a deep crossing route from one side of the field all the way to the other numbers. That requires a lot of protection. Clifford got it and got the ball to Handler. Seventh catch of the day, 19 yard gain. He has 119 yards receiving. Now Devin Ford for a two yard gain. Todd, aren't you a little surprised we haven't seen more four? We visited with James Franklin last night. He told us Noah Kane is unlikely to play. And he certainly gave the impression that the man likeliest to take the lead was Devin Ford. We and thought it's been Journey Brown. We thought we'd see more. I think that Journey Brown's a little older, maybe a little bit more proficient in the pass blocking part. Clifford for Friermuth. Inside the 10. Tackled by Antoine Wingfield. First and goal, Nittany Lions responding quickly. Tony Dewar is going to go for an interception. Watch number 16 go for the interception. Instead of the sure tackle, Friermuth able to turn it in for 10 more yards. Moving quickly. 14-yard gain on the last play. There's Devin Ford twisted back by Sam Renner. And gone 68 yards in a little over two minutes. Long way to go, just under 12 minutes. Danced away from Coughlin, crossed the five, and that's it. Winston Delano Bedour called the heartbeat of this defense by the defense coordinator Joe Rossi, made the tackle. And I would think, Todd, this might be two down, four down territory, or two plays to get the first down because three points are still down by nine, two scores. Clifford stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Ball came out with the play blown dead. Carter Coughlin and Jamal Teague there. Jamal Teague made a beautiful play. You're hoping that you're going to influence the linebackers with the fake on the jet sweep. But watch Teague on the inside just throws off the block in the center and is able to stop him in the backfield. And he's a backup Teague, just a sophomore, made only four tackles all year. It's a deep and talented team. Fourth down and goal. Clifford lobs it up for Hamler, and it's batted away. Chris Williamson had the coverage, and Minnesota takes over on downs. PJ's everywhere. We got PJ Dean working the producer chair down in the truck. PJ Fleck is Philip. John Fleck. Rodney Smith carries out to the seven yard line. Our producer Phil Dean is also uh, <laughs> Philip John. PJ's got together this morning. That's great. And the attire is a nod to Jim Tressel. Who he has mentioned many times. It was a great influence on him during the year he spent as a graduate assistant under Tressel at Ohio State. Nice year, right? mm -hmm. a nice year to be a part. 
2006. Rodney Smith dumped by Jan Johnson for a loss. Under 10 minutes to go. You guys, CJ Fleck is such an interesting character. People flock to him and gravitate towards him. What's interesting about him is he actually started out as a sixth grade social studies teacher. That was the career path he was on. He taught ancient Rome. He has been what he describes a very average person all his life. But if you're around him for five seconds, you buy into that energy. And these fans and this fan base are all in. Signed a big contract extension here this week. And I think fans are pretty excited they'll have him for a while. No doubt. He uses the word elite all the time, but everybody in the program should be striving to be elite at everything. He's an elite coach. Morgan throws a flutter ball. Bateman trying to get back to it. There's a flag down. Ball landed out of bounds. Now are they going to, they, they might have a conversation. Was this deflected, one, or number two, was it catchable? The ball fluttered. Did it get deflected? Is that why it fluttered? Pass interference. Defense. Number 29. You, you can't make this penalty if you're John Reed. He's their best corner. You got third and ten, backed up by their own end zone. Now we're told from the truck it was clearly not deflected, so that is. And he altered his course coming back to the ball. I mean, and it was catchable. I mean, it landed close enough to the sideline there to be caught with his feet in bounds. That is the costliest penalty of the game for Penn State. I mean, that is a critical error by a very smart and very good football player in John Reed. There was a question mark during the week with what was reportedly a wrist injury. Obviously playing today. No gain, maybe a yard for Rodney Smith. Ohio State's the real deal. I mean, they, they are just so complete on both sides of the ball. Minnesota does not play them. We'll possibly see him in the championship game. Penn State plays him November 23rd. DJ Flake, the clock management. Trestle ball, as he called it yesterday. Tyler Johnson, the catch. New set of downs for Minnesota. Out to their own 32 yard line and 11 yard play. Tyler Johnson has been their go to guy for the last couple years. Right here in Minneapolis, North High School. That's Bobby Bell Sr. Bobby Jr., his son, one of my best friends in Kansas City. Bobby, one of the greatest players ever played here, has endowed a scholarship here at Minnesota. And Tyler Johnson has his scholarship. And Bobby is really enjoying what he's seeing today out of this Gopher football team. I love Tyler Johnson here. Great young man. Part of the state championship basketball team for the Polders. Minneapolis North High School. And it comes with Minnesota's led almost the entire game. Entering today's game, Penn State had led for 84% of all the possible minutes in their games played this season. Rodney Smith dropped for a loss. Cam Brown exploded across the line of scrimmage to drop that for about a six yard loss. Here's today's Pacific Life game summary. Well, it's basically looking at the quarterback, Sean Clifford, Tanner Morgan, very similar guys coming into the game. Morgan's day has just been stellar. I mean, 17 of 19, 328 yards, three touchdowns against one of the best defenses in all of college football. Of course, these two don't play opposite each other. They're not on the field at the same time, but they know each other well, both in the yeah. Cincinnati area. Tanner Morgan said yesterday he remembers a youth football game they played in the sixth grade. Here's Muhammad Ibrahim stacked up. It was in the sixth grade, and it, you could tell it still bothered Tanner Morgan. He said, we lost to Clifford's team six to nothing on a hook and ladder. Yeah. He also did remember that they beat him the next year. So yes. he added that one as well. So he's one and one. Said they're actually good friends and uh, familiar with each other, stay in contact with each other. Big play here for Tanner, just to be smart. I mean, your team's got control of the game. The defense has played well. Be smart with the football here. Not surprised. Look for Mone, he's going to snap it with about 13. And the PJ Flex not going to allow that. That clock's going to run every time while they have this two score lead. James Franklin's going to use a timeout, his first of three, to stop timeout. that clock. Penn State. This is their first of the half. Minnesota leading 31 29, 626 to go. Bear in mind, Penn State has blocked three punts this season, and in all four kicks, the three block punts tied for the national lead. 
Houston and Nebraska. Good punt by Jacob Herbers. KJ Hamlet got away from it and down it at the 36. So James Franklin will be asked about that decision after the game. Sean Clifford looked around and found his man open. It's Dan Jacena. He was on the track team as a sprinter in Penn State, one of the fastest men in the program. He's to the 43 of Minnesota very quickly. A great start to this drive, 21 yards. It's really a nice job by Clifford. He held onto that ball as long as he possibly could before delivering. He's 16 out of 32 for 242. A touchdown at two picks. Joe Rossi told us yesterday, this kid plays the position well. And we have seen that, run or pass. jacenta has got to step on it, and it's a good throw. But Doerr reads the eyes of the receiver and just rips that hand up in there and knocks the ball away. And Chisena, who had two career catches before this drive started, got his third career catch and then was targeted again on the very next play. Trying to take advantage of his blazing speed. Clifford's pass batted down at the line of scrimmage. Knocked down by Sam Renner, and I believe it was caught by one of the linemen. Yeah, which was unfortunate because that becomes a loss of yardage. If it's just incomplete, it's third and 10. Because his lineman caught it, it's now third and 14 instead. Des Holmes was the left tackle on that play who caught the football. Usually a backup. But in there now, crunch time, playing left tackle. Rashid Walker ordinarily is their left tackle. Third down and 15. 5-10 to go. Two timeouts for Penn State. Down by 12. Just inside Golden Gopher territory. Clifford on target. Such Prior a, Muth looks like he got the first down. Such a dependable receiver. And Pat Fryer Muth is a tight end, but he's really just a big receiver. Has excellent hands, has a good feel for zone coverages, sits right down, then the big body's able to stretch it for the first down. We may take a look at this to see if he reached that the first down mark. The previous play was a catch for a first down. The play is under further review. After review by David Nowak, the replay official, the call on the field stands inconclusive, certainly, to change it. So a first down for Penn State at the Minnesota 32-yard line. Here's Hamler. A lot of field to his side right there. Sean Clifford steps up in the pocket. Fires on target. Jahan Dotson inside the 15-yard line. They'll mark it at the 14. They used Hamler to clear out, and Dotson came on the dig route underneath it and uh, was able to get him the football. 18-yard game. Another impressive drive by the Nittany Lions. Catch near sideline. Daniel George out of bounds. Six-yard line. Second and two. Clock running, 420 to go. Just one touchdown, four possessions inside. The red zone well below their season average. Last time they got like this. They were able to snip Nick Bowers, number 83, into the end zone for the touchdown. And the two tight ends on the left this time. It's for him. Where? Batted away by Benjamin St. Juiced. See, that's the advantage of being a 6'3 corner. He was beat on the play, but he's got such length and long arms. Even though he's beat, he's able to get there with his length and knock the football away. Exceptionally well done by the graduate student from Montreal, as Todd mentioned earlier, transfer from Michigan. Third down and two, or under four minutes to go. Penn State down by 12, two timeouts left. Play clock down to four. They're gonna have to use a timeout. Don't We're, waste the snap here. I don't think they got it off. Didn't look like they did. Journey Brown walks in. But Sean Clifford is hurt at the end of the play. It was an awkward handoff between me and Journey Brown. A lot of times on that clock, though, the referee will look up and look down, and you get about a half a second leeway.
the end of that play clock. It's the back judge's job behind the defense. So Journey Brown having a career day, career high 123 yards rushing. And he has scored two touchdowns. Jake Penninger adds the extra point. Three forty-nine to go, a five-point game. Sports Center tonight after Wyoming and Boise State with Kenny Main and Zubin Mahenty. They'll have all the post-game coverage from LSU and Alabama. Full breakdown of this compelling game between Penn State and Minnesota. Also, how good can the James Harden Russell Westbrook combo B for the Houston Rockets. Sports Center after college football on ESPN and the ESPN app. Well, we thought we were going to have a fourth quarter game. This has been a heck of a football game. Penn State showing some resiliency here in the second half. You know, they trailed at halftime to Buffalo early in the year, 10 to 7. That's Will Levis, the backup quarterback. They think very highly of him, but he might be thrust into a critically important situation here if Clifford cannot return if Penn State gets the ball back he'd be under center or taking shotgun snaps and Minnesota with their hands team on the field I would expect Penn State to kick this ball deep they've got two timeouts their defense has played much better in the second half I'm thinking they're gonna kick this ball deep and try to play defense with those two timeouts and hope that they can get a stop a three and out Team, you don't typically have a kickoff return blockable. Bounced down the field. Demetrius Douglas bobbled it for a moment, it just went down. And seven catches, 203 yards, and a touchdown. Morgan, 339 yards. Rodney Smith dropped for one yard loss. They, they, they need to make a couple first downs, and they're going to have to throw the football some with Tanner Morgan. Tanner Morgan's in trouble and sacked Micah Parsons. Back near the 10 yard line. Timeout, Penn State. This is their third and final charge timeout. The center, Connor Olsen, got fooled by the quickness of Micah Parsons. He took one false step, and Parsons was around him. That explosive first step that Micah has. And this Penn State defense, which has been much different in the second half than they were in the first half has come up with more negative plays than they had that entire first 30 minutes and now they've got their team in a great position to get the ball back with good field position and it looks like they'll have sean clifford holly sean clifford had been taken into the injury tent for penn state he just came stalking out of the tent with a man on a mission he's got blood on his jersey his hands are banged up he was not limping with that right leg that looked like it had been clamping and Pat Frymuth, the tight end, just grabbed him. They had a special message. There is juice on this Penn State sideline right now, guys. Well, that's a great thing if it was cramping, and that is a likely explanation. Yeah. He seems to be walking around fine now. Third down and 21. Rodney Smith pulls his way back to the 20. Penn State can't stop it, but they have plenty of time with this big strike offense with about three minutes, a little less than three minutes to go when they get it back. They have time and they have momentum because the last couple times they've had the ball, they have moved right down the field on Minnesota. Minnesota playing a little bit of safe coverage, not trying to bring extra pressure on Sean Clifford. And he has kind of picked them apart. You know, part of the philosophy here is to milk the clock with the lead. You just wonder if they took themselves out of their offensive rhythm in the second half, playing at a slower pace. The negative plays. Yeah, that was huge. The punt is muffed by K.J. Hamler, and it looked like the Nittany Lions got it back, but it's going to cost them some yardage back inside the 30. It seemed like there was a lot of bodies around Hamler when he tried to field this punt. He's giving the fair catch signal, but it's his own guy, I guess, that is too close to him. Yep. So there's no foul, and Isaac he certainly Lutz. touched it. Yeah. Back up wide receiver, primarily a special teams player. He got in the way. Ellis Brooks is going to, fortunately for Penn State, end up on the football. Mark it at the 28-yard line. So a field goal does Penn State no good. 
and Sean Clifford take them. 72 yards for a dramatic victory. This is what you look for if you're a quarterback. For Sean Clifford. And he fires on target. Friar Muth, nine yards. Penn State has not led today. They went down 7 0, tied it at 7, went down 14 to 7. And they have trailed ever since. Since Minnesota took that 14 to 7 lead with four and a half to go in the first quarter. Clifford. Look out from behind. Got it off with arms around his waist. And it's caught by Jahan Dotson. Tayon Devers had Clifford but couldn't get him on the ground. You got Fryer Muth and Hamler both with seven catches for over 100 yards in the ball game right now for Penn State. Clifford forced to retreat on target. Jahan Dawson inside the 20 and down at the 10 yard line. There's a flag now at the 50 yard line near the far numbers. I believe it's going to be against Minnesota for a hold. Holding defense number six. Penalties declined. First down. Chris Williamson called for holding. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he's holding on Hamler. There's the penalty. Dodson gets separation from St. Jude, who stumbled. And finally, Dodson with the big play. And we've been wondering where he's been. We know what kind of talent and ability he has. Biggest play of the ball game for the Penn State offense. He's emerging late in this game, a game they have to have. Most certainly with an eye toward the national championship picture. Here's Journey Brown driven back from the 10. Now I wonder, Todd, if you're Minnesota, do you use timeouts? I mean, Penn State has plenty of time. They're at the 10. They're in a win or lose situation. Minnesota might need time on the clock if Penn State scores. I think and, you... and if they hold Penn State here, there's so little time left, they're going to run out the clock either way. On second and nine, down the middle and chopped down Journey Brown by Thomas Barber, who's not getting up quickly. There is a flag down, and the crowd thinks this one's going against Penn State. Pass interference. Offense number 11. 15 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Daniel George was the wide receiver in a short split. He's running straight down the field and he initiates contact. Journey Brown came on the option route behind him. That's why he was so open. I think it was the right call. Meanwhile, key member of that defense, Thomas Barber. Minnesota Golden Gopher legacy. Four man rush. Clifford has room. Fires too long for Daniel George. Antoine Winfield has been spectacular today with two interceptions. All over the field, as usual, have the coverage. Beautiful job. We mentioned those two young linebackers. They were in double coverage on Pat Fryermuth on that play. That's why Sean Clifford had to try to go outside. They had his number one target blanketed. It was Antoine Winfield's dad. Great star here. Minnesota with the Vikings. Tremendous college player at Ohio State. Three man rush. Clifford again has time. Throws. And it is intercepted in the end zone by Jordan Howden. interfered with he got pulled down by Benjamin St. Juice I'm not sure if Clifford was throwing this ball for Hamler Minnesota. or for Dotson this is their second of the half 
This is a 30-second timeout. Watch Dotson get pulled down, and the ball is thrown behind Hamler and intercepted. Not sure if it was going to one or five, but it was behind Hamler, and Howden was there for the third interception of the ball game for Minnesota. In the second of his career, the former walk-on, now on scholarship, sophomore out of Las Vegas. Would it P.J. Fleck, what's all over their building, 78% if they do what? Win, you the, win the turnover battle, you have fewer missed tackles than your opponent, and you have more explosive plays, and they're going to win all three. On all three of those, when you do that, you win 78% of the time. The player spotlight brought to you by Wrangler. Rashad Bateman almost set the single game school receiving yardage record held by Ryan Thelwell back in the mid 1990s a game over at the old Metrodome which no longer exists. He had five catches of 23 yards or more. And how about Tanner Morton 18 of 20 339 yards and three touchdowns. They rode the boat and it's for real here baby. Yeah make no room on the boat. There are a lot fewer doubters around the college football landscape when it comes to the Minnesota Gophers than we had at the start of the day. They play for the governor's victory bell which dates back to 1993 when Penn State came into the Big Ten and their first game in conference was against Minnesota. It's over. One of the biggest wins in school history for the University of Minnesota. They go to 9-0. They beat undefeated previously Penn State 31-26.